Hey everybody, it's Dr. Pikin again. Welcome to another episode of the Digestion Diaries. What I wanted to talk about today is the combination of SIBO and anxiety. If you really want to find out more about SIBO, check out some other posts that we've made. Uh, but what SIBO basically is, is an, a small intestine bacterial overgrowth. Now, in order to really understand small intestine bacterial overgrowth, you have to understand that there are bacteria that belong in and on our body. Uh, they, they make up something called the microbiome. The microbiome is a word that describes all the little microorganisms that live in and on our body. And yes, they're, they're in our eyebrows, in our ears, in our mouth, um, in our gut, uh, all over our skin, in our armpits. They're, they're just everywhere. They actually, the human body has about 60 to 70 trillion cells and there are about 600 to 700 trillion microorganisms within the human body. And so they far outnumber us, even though they're smaller, but they make, out, uh, make up for about two to three pounds of our actual weight. There's tons of these things. And so let's talk about just the ones that are inside our gut. The vast majority of those little microorganisms that are inside our gut are supposed to reside mostly in our large intestine. And what can happen because of either uh, antibiotic use, eating the wrong foods, uh, a lot of gas, bloating, other medications, even stress, is you can have problems that create a shift in those microbes from the large intestine into the small intestine. You can even have other infections like um, uh, food infections, like uh, food poisoning. That can, or other types of uh, viruses that cause uh, digestive infections that can create this imbalance in these microorganisms. So what happens when we have these microorganisms in, in abundance in our small intestine? Well, we call that SIBO, a small intestine bacterial overgrowth. There's a few things that keep these bacteria from staying in your small intestine. One, the good friendly bugs are supposed to just travel through the intestines, through this peristaltic motion. We're supposed to have these movements of our small intestine that push the bacteria down into the large intestine. So certain ways of eating, if you're eating too frequently, uh, you can actually shut off that motor complex. If you actually have too much gas, it can actually stimulate the nervous system wrong. You can even have a subluxation. That's what chiropractors treat. A subluxation is a small misalignment of bone that irritates the nervous system and it can impact the migrating motor complex of the small intestine. So all these things together, how does this overgrowth of bacteria affect us? Well, mainly it causes bloating and gas. It's some of the biggest things it causes. And so when you have bloating and gas, first of all, you just feel bad. Now, that's just not good anyway. And it's especially the people that can't correlate which foods bother them. Sometimes this food bothers them, sometimes that food bothers them, but it tends to be more carbohydrates and starchy foods especially that tend to cause this problem. Sometimes it's fiber foods. Uh, and what happens is if you're getting a distension in the small intestine, there are a lot of nerves that go from the small intestine straight to our brain. There's something called a brain gut reaction. There could also be a gut brain reaction but our gut and our brain, you can call this you know, a gut feeling. You get that in your mind, um, it's, you, you get this gut feeling. Well, the gut and the brain are actually intimately connected. And you can have emotional stresses that alter the function of the gut. And you can also have the opposite way, gut imbalances that create problems in the brain. So an interesting fact about SIBO is that SIBO is a actually very common cause of chronic anxiety. And especially if there was no real true emotional trauma behind the anxiety, if there's no reason to be anxious and you happen to be bloated, you gotta do a SIBO test. You gotta look for a, a health practitioner that does this testing to find out if that is the problem. And how do you find out? You do the SIBO test. It's a breath test. You can look it up. You can look more on, our map, on my website about it. And you'll find out that from the results of the test, you can treat SIBO either by taking certain um, antibiotics. Uh, rifaximin is one of the most common. There are a lot of herbal antibiotics that you can take that are really uh, great, just like oil of oregano. If you take the right type of fiber, 
uh, then you can grow good bugs, which will fight the bad bugs. And you can also take certain herbs that stimulate that migrating motor complex of the small intestine, getting those good bugs or bad bugs to be pushed through back into the large intestine where they belong. So ultimately, what you want to do is always care for your gut because you never know how it's going to be affecting your brain. This is one of the things I look at when I'm trying to figure out what makes patients tick. Do they have a brain problem? Do they have a gut problem? Do they have both? If your doctor's not looking at you as a whole, they may be missing something. So I hope this information helps. I keep, I keep it short each time. For more information, check out the rest of the Digestion Diaries. Have a great day.